Do you like warm summers, sweet tea, and crimson tide football? If so, it's time to sell your home and move to Alabama. Alabama is a great state to relocate to, especially if you're retired. The cost of living is one of the lowest in the country, and it has very affordable real estate. More and more people are looking to move to Alabama for retirement. Instead of Florida or Arizona, it's just a little bit cheaper here. In my opinion, most of the great places to live in Alabama are in the suburbs. Some of the suburbs here are amazing, but they do still have some great small rural towns. And that's the focus of these videos. What we're looking for in this series is that sweet spot, small rural towns that are decent places to live, aren't too close to any major cities, they're easy on the crime rate and not five hours away from a hospital or so far out in the sticks that you can't get decent internet. Those things knock a lot of nice rural towns off these lists. Crime and internet seem to be the ones that knock most of Alabama's rural towns off today's video. Get it? Got it? Good. Let's take a look. Number five, Cedar Bluff, Alabama. Cedar Bluff is a town on Weiss Lake, about an hour and a half northeast of Birmingham, near the Georgia border. This area is known for its crappie fishing. It's spelt crappy, but it's pronounced crappie fishing. It's type of fish. It's not just horrible fishing. Anyway, this is a great lake town to retire. The cost of living is below the national average, and it's on a lake. That type of thing never happens. Well, I shouldn't say never. Hardly ever happens. Cedar Bluff is a nice lake community with a lot of nature and farmland around it. The town is kind of spread out, and they have about 1,900 residents, and it won't seem like it because, like I said, it's spread out. The crime rate here is 16% lower than the national average. Like I was saying, the cost cost of living in Cedar Bluff is 25% lower than the national average. When it comes to their real estate, they get a thumbs up. You can get a home here for under 200000 within walking distance from the lake, and nice homes on the water start around 400000 Now, if you want to buy lake property and build or, let's say, park a motorhome on it, even better. Waterfront lots start around fifteen dollars or $20,000. When it comes to the internet, they get a big thumbs up here. They have TDS internet which gives one gig fiber and it covers 98% of the town. They also have Spectrum one gig. It only covers about 20% of the town, but at least some of you would have an option there. Healthcare gets a big thumbs up too. Cedar Bluff doesn't have anything in town. They have an EMS there, like emergency services thing. But right across the Cedar Bluff Causeway, about eight minutes away, you have Cherokee Medical Center. Eight minutes away, that might as well be in town. And that's a pretty good sized place. Along with that, that whole area right there by Cherokee Medical Center has different doctor's offices and orthodontists and all that good stuff. Number four, Owens Crossroad, Alabama. Owens Crossroad is a small community about 25 minutes southeast of downtown Huntsville. This is almost too close to a major city, but it's just far enough outside to make this list. The area has a history that can be dated back to the 1800s. Pioneers drifted into this area from Tennessee, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia with names like Wood, Parker, Craig, Maples, Carpenter, but a gentleman named Thomas J. Owens had migrated from Virginia and was the first to build his family home near the intersection of two crossroads, so it became known as Owens Crossroad. Owens Crossroad has a population of about 2,500 residents. Now, they've jumped up in population quite a bit. In the 2010 census, they only had 1,500, so they gained about 1,000 people for this small area. And they get a thumbs up for their crime rate. It's 45% lower than the national average, which is pretty good. Their internet, they also get a giant thumbs up because they have Xfinity, one gig. That covers 81% of the town. They have AT&T Fiber, five gig, which covers 60% of the town. And list this, it gets better. Google Fiber. 2 gig covers 80% of the town. You got some really good options here. Great area if you're a remote worker with that kind of internet. You know, you're working for Geico Insurance or something, working from home. This is a great place to live. I mean, if you're web hosting, that's enough internet to do all the things you need to do there. You could start up an email marketing firm in this small town. When it comes to healthcare, they also get a thumbs up. You have Crestwood Medical Center on the south side of the Huntsville metro area. It's only about 20 minutes away from Owens Crossing and they've got ER and everything you're gonna need. It's a pretty big place. Owens Crossroad gets a thumbs up when it comes to their real estate. They've got a lot of new construction, a lot of new homes have been built in this area, and they start off around $250,000, $270,000. That's not bad for new construction. You could find older homes for under $250,000 on the outskirts of town that are in decent shape. The occasional one will pop up that's under $200,000 that might need a little work. The area is surrounded by creeks and rivers, so if you like fishing, I'm sure you're not going to be bored here. 
Number three, Springville, Alabama. Springville is about 30 minutes northeast of Birmingham, just outside the Birmingham metro area. This is another one that's on the outskirts of a major metro area, but it's still plenty rural. They have new construction all over the town center of Springville, but they also have older homes and land outside of town that really show Springville as a rural place to live. There seems to be a little confusion when it comes to how many people live here. Wikipedia says they have 4,700 residents. I looked at the U.S. Census. It says they have 4,200 residents, so it's somewhere around there. They get a thumbs up for their crime rate. It's actually 57% lower than the national average, which is outstanding. Their internet also gets a big thumbs up. They have Spectrum offering one gig cable internet to about 65% of the town. They also have Windstream offering one gig fiber to 98.2% of the town. So you have some options. They have like three others offering cable and fiber broadband, but they only cover like four and 10% of the town. Those are JTM broadband and uh, GoNet speed. So you got plenty of options. When it comes to healthcare, they also get a thumbs up. They have quite a few doctors and clinics in town, but if you really need a hospital, you have Ascension St. Vincent East, which is about 25 minutes to the southeast near Birmingham. They also have one about 25 minutes to the north. If you need some real estate, like I'd said, they have a lot of new construction in and around town. Those start off around 300,000 and work their way up into the 700,000. Some of them are really, really nice. But on the outskirts of town, you can still find things for around two hundred and twenty to two hundred and seventy thousand dollars that look nice and maybe might need a little work. Nothing major. All in all, Springville's a great place to live, especially if you want to be near a major city, but still live the rural lifestyle. Gives you the best of both worlds. This part of Alabama is great for fishing. Actually, you know, I, that's really hard to find an area in Alabama that's not like downtown Birmingham or Montgomery that doesn't have great fishing. This whole state's like that. Mississippi and Georgia are the same way. Spent a lot of time in both those states, and yeah, you could fish anywhere you want. Dig a line in, you're bound to pull something out. Number two, Hayden, Alabama. Hayden, Alabama is a great small rural town that has one requirement all good southern small towns should have, and really any small rural towns. No sidewalks. Yeah, that's like a requirement. Now, to be fair, they do have like a, I don't know, 20 foot stretch in front of the middle school, but that's about it. They don't have any sidewalks anywhere. And if you ask anyone why they don't have sidewalks, they probably look at you. Why do we need sidewalks? Then they go on to some story about how some Yankee came down here one time, suggested sidewalks, and they chased him out of town. Stories like that usually are finished up with, that was right before the war. Hayden sits about 30 minutes north of Birmingham, Alabama, and just east of a place called Smoke Rise. Yeah, not kidding, it's called Smoke Rise. Hayden has a population of about 1,200 residents, and they get a thumbs up for their crime rate. It's 61% lower than the national average. If you want to get some internet in Hayden so you could uh, Google why they don't have uh, sidewalks, you got a lot of choices, so they get a big thumbs up. You have AT&T Fiber that covers almost 70% of the town, and they offer 5 gigs. Outstanding. They have Spectrum that offers 1 gig to a little over 50% of the town. You go down to JTM Broadband, 1 gig fiber to about 45% of the town. Then you have GoNet Speed Fiber, 1 gig, and they have that almost 30% of the town. So a lot of options and a lot of good speeds here. When it comes to healthcare, they get a thumbs up because right down the road, just outside of town, about eight minutes away, they have an urgent care. If you need to go to the hospital, you can go right down into Birmingham about 30 minutes away. That might be a pain because you're going in the city. You could just head east and go to the Ascension St. Vincent Blount Hospital there. That's only like 30 minutes away as well. When it comes to real estate, Hayden is going to get a faded thumbs up because they only got a couple places for sale and two of them are lots, a couple acres going for about $25,000. They also have 53 acres being sold in town. That's going for $400,000. Now, on the outskirts of town, you can find some homes right now that are around $200,000 that probably need a little work, but they're only $200,000 and they usually come with an acre or two. Not a bad place to live, especially when you consider such a low crime rate. It's really rural. It's a nice place to live. I wouldn't mind living here. All right, before we get to number one, don't forget we have another channel called On This Day. There's a link down below. Love it if you went over there and watched some videos and subscribed. Subscribe to this channel. Give some videos a big thumbs up here, too, while you're at it. It's free. All right, on to number one. And number one, Marion, Alabama. Marion sits about 90 minutes west of Montgomery, kind of the midway point between Montgomery and Meridian, Mississippi. 
This is one of those great southern towns with the town square that has the county courthouse right in the middle of it and shops surrounding it. Just the way an American small town should be laid out. This used to be Creek territory, Creek Indians. It was originally founded in 1819 as Muckle Ridge. In 1822, the city was renamed in honor of Francis Marion, the Swamp Fox, hero of the American Revolutionary War. Marion incorporated the town the same year and later became Perry County's second county seat because the old one, Perry Ridge, was deemed unsuitable. Marion has about 3,500 residents and they get a thumbs up for their crime rate. It's actually 76% lower than the national average. That is outstanding, especially for Alabama. The only knock on this place is their internet. They don't have the best. They're getting a faded thumbs up. They have AT&T DSL, which covers about 70% of the town, but it only gets up to 100 Mbps. After that, you get Pine Belt Communications, which offers 100 Mbps. They only cover like 20% of the town, but that's fiber. You know, after that, you better hope that Starlink works pretty good here. So yeah, faded thumbs up. When it comes to health here, they're going to get a thumbs up because they have a couple different clinics and a few doctors in town, along with an urgent care type place. But if you need a legit hospital, you got Vaughn Regional Medical Center down in Selma, and that's about 30 minutes away. When it comes to real estate, we're going to give them a thumbs up because they got a lot to choose from and it's relatively inexpensive. Sure, most of the homes that are really inexpensive are going to need some work, but you got some choices. Houses here start off around $65,000 and work their way up to about $450,000. Now, anything below $200,000, you're going to need to do some work. Anything above $200,000 is probably ready to go. They have some beautiful old homes that look like they were well-maintained or recently redone, and those go for about $125,000. This is another part of Alabama that has creeks, lakes, rivers everywhere. So if you like to fish, you like to be on the water, you could pick a lot worse places. They also have the Marion Military Institute in town. So in case you need a place to store your kids, this is a beautiful part of Alabama though. If you ever get a chance, go out here and visit. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a great day, and be nice to each other.